once again. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for more Psycho Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcast platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. Don't forget to go over to HarleyLiberty.com for the rest of your biker news that you don't see on this program. Got a bunch of news over there on that one. Whoa, did the Cubbies just clinch, baby. They clinched the Central Division. Oh, yeah, I love my Cubbies, baby. And all you haters that don't like freaking the Cubbies, go blow. You're just jealous. Anyway, been getting a lot of good comments as we, uh, regarding that video I just did, Am I My Brother's Keeper? No, you're not. No, you're not. <sighs> don't you get tired of people using the word brother? It's like an oxymoron now, I guess you can say, man, because everybody uses it. It's so watered down. Uh, I was on a ride, you know, last ride, because uh, I'm going to be doing some knee stuff, uh, getting that fixed. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's going to be a bad one. Anyway, anyway. Enjoying the ride, decide to stop, uh, go in, you know, have a Coke, and dude comes up to me. Hey, brother, how you doing? Hey, Hollywood. It's like, okay, I get it. You know, I go out and people want to say hi and stuff, but don't call me brother. Please, don't do that. You know, because I just look up at him and, you know, I'm dumbfounded. You know, maybe it was the pain from the knee and stuff like that. Uh, maybe I'm getting old, I'm getting grouchy. Why, why are you misusing that word? That was the first thing that came to my mind. I was like, did I grow up with you or something? Am I missing something here? And, you know, I go on to give the lecture and stuff. Uh, you know, I'm not going to go too far into it because it's in the video. Uh, but it's really, really killed the meaning of that word. It, 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 they only use it because they don't know your damn name. Or they want to sound some kind of cool, I guess. Some kind of cool because they got the motorcycle and they want to, you know, I don't even know what it is, man. It's like I'm a loss for words. I guess hooked on phonics don't work with some of these people. And people are go, why do you say hooked on phonics all the time? You know, you're being racist. I'm like, what? That's another thing. Oh, if you were... Watching the death penalty one that we were doing over on Hollywood and China Dow. China Dow freaked. I was like, man, I didn't think you had it in you. Because <laughs> usually she's fun, outgoing, laughing. But when we got to that topic where they were saying that this one's being charged for this and that. And it's a racist type of deal. Oh, Mo, she just freaked she's like you know what i am so sick and tired of hearing about you're racist that's racist uh blm blah 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 you gotta go see that video man i never seen china like that usually i'm the one and everybody looks at me and calls me the racist <laughs> yeah i've been getting that a lot lately by uh putting out my viewpoints on what's been going on in this country uh, first thing, racist, racist, racist. You know, then the other creators are getting contact. Did you know Hollywood's racist? It's like, man, grow the hell up, man. Everybody's sick of that. When you use the race card as much as you do, it actually waters down that word. It's just watered down as worse as friggin' brother is in the biker scene. Do you have any friggin' arguments, basically, is what I always come back and say. Do you have arguments against what I'm talking about? Do you have facts and figures to back up your position? 
And normally you get the deer in the headlight look. Well, you wear uh, that white boy hat. You, oh, by the way, I'm probably going to get it now. I got my Peckerwood hat. Yes, uh, Paul over at Bagger Syndicate Cycles sent me this sucker. Whoo, I love it. Love it, baby. So you can get yours as well from Bagger Syndicate Cycle if you're a proud white boy. But just because I wear what I'm proud of, does that make me a racist? No. That just means I'm proud of who I am and I'm not afraid to say it like everybody else is. I don't care about cancel, being canceled. <laughs> All I say is, you know, go woke, go broke, baby. And this one ain't going woke. You know, I am who I am. I have my beliefs. And I'm not just going to sit there and cower to people that want to push that BS. That's just like, you got a lot of blacks that have the black power, you got the black pride, you know, but when it comes to white pride, boy, you're nothing but a su white supremacist. So it gets tiring. But anyway, we were going over the death penalty because we do a lot of uh, different subjects on our other show. It's not just a biker show. We don't, uh, we cover topics that are in the mainstream, we cover you know, controversial stuff, and uh, <laughs> to say the least. So, they were claiming that, because uh, there was just a black, put to death in Terry Hope. I think he killed two missionaries when he was 19. They called him a teenager. See, you know, when you reach 18, you're not a teenager to me anymore. You're an adult. If you'd have joined the military, you're an adult. But, of course, it's how the media, they frame the issue. They frame it that way. So, anyway, they made sure to put the first black man since Attorney General Barr reinstituted to get these things moving along. Why did you even have to put it there? There was, what, three uh, whites and I think a Hispanic put to death before, but you got to make sure you put it that way. You know, that's the problem with our media, man. It's They're the ones tearing this country apart. And you kind of get sick and tired of the argument. Well, the First Amendment, that don't mean you have the right to be a dick and tear the very fabric of this country apart. In these days... It is sad when you're white, and if you have a different viewpoint, they want to throw that racist crap out at you. What's even more sad is there's no pushback against it because you're all scared chicken shits. If you believe something, especially if you're a biker, you stand behind it. You don't cower. Hopefully, <laughs> I'm an example of pushing ahead, man. You know, because I've been taking a beating, <laughs> especially through the emails with the threats and you're a bigot and blah, blah, blah. Me, when I get them, I laugh. But I take a beating on them. But I'm not going to cower down. I'll never do that, man. You know, a lot of people don't even know what a peckerwood is. That's funny, especially if you're a biker. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, you know, just remember, don't call me uh, brother when you see me out in public. Uh, I, I got to get to know you, man, a little more. You know, there's people I've known for 20 years that I don't even call that because it was something that used to be sacred. It just ain't sacred anymore. And yes, for those that have requested me doing standalone videos, talking about a topic here or there, uh, yeah, I can do something on the weekends for you. Monday through Friday is our biker news show, so I like keeping that. I uh, love seeing the chat rooms flat, uh, flash up over on Facebook and uh, YouTube. 
but on the weekends when we're not doing biker news because it's Monday through Friday for Motorcycle Mayhem, I'll do some of them videos. You know, I really appreciate the support of you guys uh, watching them. But let's get to, yes, we're going to get to it. The Biker News. Get your most unbiased and trusted Biker News now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. Okay, here we go with the Biker News this morning. Man, it's Monday. Uh, ass dragon, man, ass dragon. Uh, MercuryNews.com in suit against Solano County. East Bay Dragons Motorcycle Club alleged racism was behind canceled fairgrounds event. Hmm. Ain't it, well, this is California. Ain't they freaking like banning everything? <laughs> Oh my god, it's no wonder everybody's moving out of that freaking state. Uh, by Nate Gartwell of the East Bay Dragons, the first all-black motorcycle club to exist in the Bay Area. Yeah, they're uh, pretty famous out there. Has filed a federal lawsuit against Solano County alleging that the county employee concocted a reason to cancel a planned event at the fairgrounds after hearing that one of its members had associations with the Black Panthers. Whoa, there's uh, a group you want to talk about racism, the Black Panthers. The suit, yeah, the Black Panthers don't like this country at all, and they don't like Whitey. Uh, filed last June, claims that the Dragons planned a 60th anniversary event at the Solano County Fairgrounds in uh Valley Hole, uh, let's see here, that was to be attended by at least 3,800 people and would have featured an impressive lineup of music and comedy. Instead, the event was canceled at the last minute after the Dragons had spent thousands in fees and planning. Now that BS right there. You know, they spent thousands of dollars and then they want it canceled. <laughs> I would have had it, so, I'd have had it right in the middle of the street. Now the club is suing to recoup those funds, which includes cash to pay for the planned list of featured rappers, singers, and a comedian. Uh, then they give, you know, who was going to play it. Uh, yeah, it's not something I would have gone. Uh, the suit is still in the early eight, uh, stages. The county has not responded in court. The fairground CFO uh, said it has not yet reviewed the suit with his attorney and declined to comment. Uh, yeah, if you're over on, uh, the radio, come check it out. I'm looking at that frickin' news from that idiot. Anyway, according to the lawsuit, the trouble for the planned August 29th, okay, so this is before COVID, before my fault, event started when a county employee learned that a member of the Dragons owned its All Good Bakery in Oakland, located at 5622 Martin Luther King Way, you know, I have a question, and hopefully it's not right, you know. You're racist for asking that. No. Why is it anywhere there's a Martin Luther King Drive, the neighborhood is pretty bad. It's like a bomb hit the place. Crime, drugs, all that. Why is that? I don't get it. The Black Panthers' first headquarters. They're a bunch of schlucks. And Black Panthers are morons. Uh, the bakery's website says its founder, Kim Clark, is a proud of that fact because his family benefited from the Panthers' free breakfast program as kids. Uh, doing a little public stuff out there, huh, Panthers? According to the suit, all of this was a problem for the employee who allegedly remarked that the Black Panthers were, quote, the greatest threat to the internal security of the country. Well, they're one of them, BLMs, the B and the other, you know, just saying, and started working to cancel the Dragon's event. As a result of this, 
The suit alleges fairground staff invented the rouse that was a credible threat to the safety of the event, but there was no credible threat at all. Well, the insidious belief of EBDs that threat traveled all the way to Oakland and with the help of the Oakland Police Department and at the conclusion of the 60th anniversary celebration on September 2nd, the EBD were surrounded by Oakland police officers due to racist motives. Everybody's got racist motives as they were enjoying themselves at level 13. For those that don't know, the Dragons were founded in the 1950s as a car club, but switched over to motorcycles in 1959. Their founder, Toby Jean Levingston, remained president until his death. Uh, in East Oakland, the biker club is beloved, said Councilman Larry Reed, who said the group's clubhouse in his district on International Boulevard has produced food distribution on Thanksgiving and toy drives during Christmas. You know, the East Bay Dragons, they do a hell of a lot of stuff, and that's good stuff. But you know what? I, I really hate to see, you know, their legacy overshadowed by throwing the word racist around. I really do. Uh, the East Bay Dragons are an incredible organization, Reed said. They really interact with the young kids out here in East Oakland with families. Reed said the Dragons have held events at the Oakland Zoo and never faced complaints except about the noise of their motorcycles. Well, we all know that as bikers. Always complaining, people. Now pipes save lives, baby. If you come out here and talk to folks, no one is going to say anything negative about the East Bay Dragons. Which is cool, man. You know, most neighborhoods, they love their local motorcycle club. Because it makes it safe for the neighborhood. They'd only talk about the good things they do and how they are positive role models. So, that right there is out of the Mercury News. They're suing uh, because the event was canceled. So, we'll keep you updated as it goes along. Now, another story that we've covered. <laughs> Government at its best. South Carolina Department of Commerce uh, reverses decision allows Murals Inlet Biker Bar to hold pre-bike week rally. Hmm, I wonder why they reversed themselves. Hmm, I don't get it. The South uh, Carolina Department of Commerce had originally rejected SBB's, I think that's suck bang blow, I love it if that's what it is. It probably is, you know, because it will not tell you in this article, probably. Uh, events exception request to hold the Myrtle Beach uh, fall pre-bike rally that was expected to take place Friday through Saturday. You know, it's only biker bars being targeted and stuff or biker related businesses because they're out there giving you the middle finger because, you know what, this stuff with uh, the lockdowns, <laughs> Sad state of affairs, and I don't think, uh, you know, as we learn more about this disease and the, the kill rate of it, I don't know, man, if it was really worth shutting down an economy. I really don't. You know, a lot of people are saying now, you know what, keep our most vulnerable safe from it and go back to your lives. I, I'm, starting to, I'm starting to have to agree with that. Not everybody has to, uh, you know, lose their jobs or, or lose their businesses over this when the kill rate isn't that high. Under the current uh, governor's executive order, organizations hoping to host events with more than 250 people must put in an event exception uh, request with the State Department of Commerce and it must be approved. You would have to think that, especially in Democratic-run uh, states and cities, man. I don't know how you morons vote for them, but hey, that's your freaking uh, loss of rights, not mine. Uh, but they're trying to, how do you say it, uh, 
I'll uh, take control of your business's way. I was going to, you know, something along down them lines. They want to run every aspect of your damn life. And, you know, you're starting to let them do it through all these executive orders. You know, how many freaking businesses have went under because of this stupid crap with them? How many people has lost their jobs? And I believe this is the same bar that the South Carolina Department of uh, Commerce is going after the liquor license. Uh, let's see here. Uh, they stated in the report that it was brought to its attention that the biker bar has been operating in violation of the governor's ex uh, executive order. Hmm. But then, less than an hour after WMBF News reported the decision, the owner of SBB reached out and provided an email that the State Department of Commerce sent him at 422. It stated the event requested had been granted. WMBF News is also reaching out to the South Carolina Department of Commerce. Uh, it uncovered last week that the uh, South Carolina Department of Revenue is seeking to permanently revoke SBB's alcohol license. So, you know, they want to put people out of work is what they want to do. By the way, if you're out in South Carolina, get into the fight, will you? Get off your asses and get on the phone with this, uh, you know, what is it? Uh, let me see here. South Carolina Department of Revenue and start saying, hey. We don't want to lose our businesses in our communities. Documents from the agency state that the Biker Bar hosted multiple live music events, including a concert with Bone Thugs and Harmony in July during the Myrtle Beach Bike Week Spring Rally. What do you think people's going to do during a rally, you jackasses? The documents went on to say that SBB remained open for 12 weeks as regular concert venue and nightclub despite being ordered to remain closed. Ordered to remain closed. I wonder if the founders had that in mind with the Constitution if a government can shut down a business. I'm just saying. It was during that time that an executive order was in place that classified concert venues and nightclubs as non-essential businesses. Hmm. Non-essential business. I would have to argue that maybe it was an essential business for not only the small business owner, but for the employees that work there. The attorney for the biker bar has submitted paperwork to the administrative law court showing that it will fight the uh, alcohol license rest revocation. My God. You know what? The minute you give up your freedom, the more they're going to take, man. I'm telling you. Give them people a call if you're out in South Carolina, man. Help this bar out. Now, let's go up north to our crazy neighbors. OPP is investigating homicide of Hell's Angel near Carlton Place. The Ontario uh, Provisional Police say the, quote, sudden death. Well, that usually happens if somebody shoots you or something. It's sudden death. Uh, of a man in Beckwith Township is now being investigated as a homicide. A post-mortem examination conducted in Ottawa on September 25th Determined the death was a result of homicide. Police responded to a home on Scotch Corners Road. Man, they love their scotch out there. Uh, before 10.30 uh, a.m. and found Gregory Slybridge, 39, dead on the scene. Uh, he is a full patch uh, Hells Angel. According to the police, he is also the son of Lyndon Sledgewidge, a retired OPP officer. Who was the official national anthem singer for the Ottawa Senators for more than two decades. Rock on, rock on. There was no answer at the family home in nearby Ashton. Uh, Lanark County OPP officers under the direction of the OPP's criminal investigation branch continue to probe the death from up north. Now, something that happened uh, this past weekend, sad state of affairs. Uh, ABC News, the Associated Press, is putting this out to everybody. Police, one shot and killed seven wounded at Iowa Biker Gathering. 
Uh, let's see here. Gunfire erupted early Saturday at a gathering of motorcycle clubs in Iowa, killing one person and wounding seven others. I do not have any information on what clubs were there. About 100 people were at the gathering inside a building in Waterloo when there was, quote, some kind of confrontation shortly after 3 a.m., Joe Fitzgerald, the police chief of the city about 90 miles northeast of Des Moines. Officers were nearby at a traffic stop up when the shooting started, uh, said Captain uh, Joe Liebold with the Waterloo Police Department. They arrived to find a chaotic scene with people hurt and others fleeing in the area, and they began administering aid as paramedics and firefighters pulled up. Quote, it was a pretty dramatic scene, said Battalion Chief Ben Peterson with the Waterloo Fire Rescue. Coming into something like that, you are trying to size up the patients and triage the scene. Nearby, police officers heard the gunfire and responded within seconds. Eight people had gunshot wounds and one of them later died. Four other people were hurt by broken glass or other debris while fleeing. The gathering wasn't authorized, and investigators were trying to determine who leased the building. So, you got to be authorized now to lease a building, don't you? Fitzgerald said at a news conference, investigators are still trying to determine whether there was more than one shooter, and no arrests have been made. Liebold said police do not believe it was a random act, and the public is not in danger. Three people were arrested after officers responded to a disorderly conduct call outside the emergency room at Mercy One Waterloo Medical Center. Yep, seems like a couple clubs are involved there, but uh, I'll give you more as uh, we find out. I'm sure it's going to be all over the papers this week. Corey Graff's Wall of Shame, baby! NOPD, New Orleans, police officer arrested for inappropriate relationship with a minor. Yep, here's another one with the sex stuff with you freaks, you cops, you freaks. Uh, NOPD senior police officer Rodney Vickner was charged for engaging in an appropriate relationship with an underage minor. The NOPD Public Integrity Bureau conducted a preliminary investigation into the case after receiving information on the alleged relationship. Vickner was arrested on Friday, September 25th after being a 13-year veteran of the department. He was charged, here we go, with sexual battery, indecent behavior with a juvenile, and malfeasance in office. Vickner was arrested at his home in St. Tamiri, Parish by the parish sheriff's office and placed immediately on suspicion. Quote, allegations against one of our own involving a juvenile is re <laughs> you think? <laughs> Rehepresentable. <sighs> My God. You know what? Sometimes reading these things and talking about them really screws your head up because you're like, man... Are you guys that freaking homely or are you that hard up that you can't get somebody other than a kid? You're messing with a kid's mind. Probably giving them PTSD. <sighs> My God. Upon learning of the situation, the NOPD took swift action against the accused officer. New Orleans police officers are held to a higher standard. We will not tolerate behavior that compromises the public trust. I guess, man. Uh, one more. Baltimore cop charged in a series of domestic incidences in Hartford County remained on the force after a 2018 DUI. This by Philip Jackson and James Whitlow. A Baltimore police officer has been charged in Hartford County with multiple counts of assault after an investigation uncovered a year-long pattern of alleged abuse, including pointing a gun to his wife's head and threatening the killer, according to the Maryland court, uh, court records and charging documents. Matthew Tress, 36, was arrested. The allegation surfaced this August 1st, court records show, when uh, he told police he lost his temper because he was exhausted from working 
So much police overtime that he had barely slept in a week. Bel Air police wrote that Cress suffered a mental episode that including punching himself in the face. Cress said he was uh, in a panic because the Baltimore Police Department was finally going to suspend him more than two years after he had been charged and convicted of drunken driving. Court records show he has been on uh, court-ordered probation since 2018, even as he was patrolling Baltimore streets and making arrests. Hmm. Charging documents from the August incident allegedly nearly a year of dangerous and unstable episodes. Yeah, you guys want this guy out in the street with a gun. Including one that kicked off when he accused his wife of not properly preparing his meds. Holy crap, man. <laughs> Stated he did not want to turn, harm himself or anyone else, but wanted to seek help before things escalated. That, however, was not the only time things got out of hand in the officer's personal life. Are you freaking, you're kidding me, right? You had this dude on the freaking streets? My God, it's a wonder he didn't kill anybody that we know of. Hey guys, Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to baggersyndicatecycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Okay, welcome back, man. Yes, Bagger Syndicate Cycle, you to get some cool hats, man. He has all kinds of logos. Uh, that you can choose from. I say go get you a Peckerwood hat, man. I'm just saying it's a badass hat. Get you one. <laughs> they got some awesome stuff over there. Uh, as well, go visit Hollywood and China Dial Show. It's all over Spotify, iTunes, anywhere you want to get it on a podcast. It's there. Listen uh, at work or take us with the ride. And boy, China Dial gets going, man. I'm telling you. And she's also going to be doing some standalone. Uh, Video content, you know, a 10 minutes long about subjects that a lot of people like hearing about. So she's going to be doing that. And if you want to hear a topic that you want me to do a standalone on, uh, on this channel has to be biker related, a biker related question or something like that. I'll do a short video for you like I did uh, with am I uh, my brother's keeper. Nope. No, you're not. You'll get my unfeathered views, let me tell you about that. Uh, anyway, I think the concept of this whole freaking video has to be stop pulling the race card every damn time something pisses you off. Because instead of helping your cause, you're destroying your cause. Because people, they don't want to keep listening to it. Yeah, are there some serious racist stuff out there? Yeah, there is. I'm not going to say there isn't. But when you trivial, uh, trivialize it, then it, it just waters it down, man. And people are like, oh, there they go again with the race card, blah, blah, blah. You know, for example, you want to know something racist. Trump just appointed Amy uh, Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court. And, you know, our lefty friends, man, they're going all nuts. The loony left, as I call them. They started going after her because she has two Haitian adopted kids. Two. And they're black. They started, well, how do we know it was a legal adoption? You know, all that stuff that happens down there in that country. It was like, damn, <laughs> you guys are going at the, that angle of attack. But, you know, when are people of color and other ethnic backgrounds going to understand that they are following a bunch of uh, coast, west and east coast liberal elite Democrats that don't give a damn about you? When? What have they done for you? Besides leave your cities in squalor that's how i can say it now i hate to be the bearer of bad news and that's why i asked that one question earlier 
is wherever you, you find a Martin Luther King drive, man, the uh, the crime's rampant, and it's just not a, a good place to live, man. And you would think that that would be one of the best streets around because of what he was about. I'm just saying. Now, this thing going out in California, I you know, it was last year, it was before uh, this COVID stuff. Uh, I can see where somebody gets upset about the Black Panthers. They're not the best organization out there. They're, uh, you know, the equivalent of the KKK. You know, you might be able to do all this community service stuff, but, you know, that's what they are. There's no doubt about it. They, they're militant just like the freaking Triple K. Just saying, look it up if you don't believe me. And if you're going to call me a racist because of that statement, I don't know what the, you know what, I can't help you, man. And you know what, I really don't care, <laughs> you know, because I'm not going to sit here and, you know, say sorry about something that I don't need to say sorry about. So, uh, as far as our up north crazy brothers, if you want to call them that, that's what them rubs do, our brothers. You got to use that word to be cool now, I guess. Uh, you know what? I hate seeing anybody die and die by homicide and stuff. Uh, so the investigation's going on. I don't really have much about that particular incident to say anything about. But what happened in Iowa, again, I do not know anything as far as the clubs involved. Uh, hopefully, you know, it was some random stuff. But we'll, I'm sure to find, we'll find out, won't we? But then, of course, our uh, choreographs, wall of shame. What can I say, man? It's always a couple things. They're either beating on their wives or they're sexually assaulting minors or raping somebody. That's why with that Bowling Green study, you really need to uh, take a look at it because it really gets in depth with a lot of bad cop stuff, man. It was one of the you know first studies of its kind because the federal government don't keep uh, statistics on what these people are doing, good or bad. I guess they don't want to air their dirty laundry to the public. I guess they don't want to be seen as hypocritical. Just saying, man. So, don't forget to uh, visit TarleyLiberty.com. Get the rest of your biker news, man. Get on over there and check it out, man. We got freaking news from everywhere on that site, man. It's a pretty damn good site. Again, HarleyLiberty.com. With that, I will see you guys later. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on.